these pictures are frightening indeed. This is so shocking, of course, to everybody watching. And looted during the racial riots. Being thrown, even the event organizer was pepper sprayed at one point. At least three people were arrested and charged. <laughs> Believe it, it's a moment. Everywhere you look in Koreatown, in downtown LA, and in South Central, there was chaos today. A mob mentality, burning, looting, and in some cases, even celebrating. And those, on the other hand, who view the violence spreading throughout Los Angeles as an expression of sheer lawlessness. We treated at nearby hospitals, but law enforcement also telling us that there are a number of bodies that remain in the church. Good morning, Georgia. From the air, you really get a sense of the scope of this massacre, those deadly bullets flying. If you've turned on your TV or followed the news, you might feel like the world is getting worse. But is this actually what is happening? Public perception about crime in the United States leans toward crime increasing. But according to the Pew Research Center and statistics from the FBI, crime is on the decline. Since 1993, violent and property crime has decreased by nearly 50%, and the nation's overall rate for gun deaths has declined by 31%. There are theories that explain the discrepancy between public perception and what reality actually is. Medium theorist Dr. Brian Ott states the world may not be as bad as portrayed in the media. I don't see media as something in our environment, I see media as our environment. So I think our whole world is mediated. And so I think whatever the dominant technologies at any given moment in society are, that's what the nature of society looks like. So we're in what I would call sort of the, the third major phase or historical period for media, and that would be digital media. Um, and we live in an endless digital environment. You mentioned that you don't have cable, but you do watch TV. Is there any yeah. other forms of media that you use to get your I, information I'm from? On Facebook, um, social media would kind of be my main form of media. I don't watch the news a lot um, because it makes me sad. I read Truth Dig, I read The Intercept. I don't even watch Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, those, you know, that type of media, at least. It's clearly slanted to the left. Media has done a fantastic job of devaluing human life. Anytime you have access to information and knowledge, that's a good thing. But at the same time, it can be too much. It can help you start to, or I don't know if help is the right word, but it can make you start to think that things really are bad in the world. The media can sort of magnify bad news, and there are some good news stories that aren't as attractive to cover in the media, and maybe we need more good news going out way to make it exciting. One of the older concepts that's been talked about is sort of the mayhem index where, where things are going negatively, it has high dramatic um, uh, potential or, or uh, power and people are, are drawn to dramatic stories. And so there's been a, a movement in our uh, news industry to make it more and more commercial. If you were truly interested in just informing people, right? you would get the, the advertising industry out of the news altogether, but we don't do that. Um, and one of the ways that we know that the news is commercial, particularly the televised news, for instance, is that there are literally commercial breaks in the middle of the news. If you'll excuse me, I'll just take a break uh, from making this point by enjoying the refreshing taste of Mountain Dew Code Red. 
Today's weather brought to you by Choice Hotels. Light up a camel and be an eyewitness to the happenings that made history in the last 24 hours. My first postdoc that I did was in computational cognitive science. We talked a lot about sampling um, and the idea that when you're trying to learn a topic or a concept or what a category is, you have to collect samples. I had a bag of M&Ms, right? And I wanted you to, or maybe it was just a bag of candy, and I wanted you to make a generalization about that bag, you would start pulling samples out of that bag of candy. And if all you did was pull out green M&Ms, and then you'd probably say that, well, it's a bag of green M&Ms, right? If you pulled out a green M&M and a Jolly Rancher, you might say, well, it's a bag of candy because you're sampling these bits of evidence and you're assuming that the, the samples that you're collecting, which assume, you've assumed are randomly sampled, are being pulled out of that bag, are representative of the whole bag. Um, and what that means is that we're often not talking across our differences. So we see this in the political sphere as well, and this is one of the places where it's most significant. And I think one of the reasons why our politics has become so divided is people can literally tune into the news uh, and information that confirms their pre-existing ideological biases. We are hearing it. Yes, I'm sorry. But they, Fox viewers are not hearing it. People not in hearing. Alabama, conservative viewers are not hearing it. Right, now they're hopefully just... they're turning the channel and hearing all sides, but unfortunately too often folks on the left and the right live in bubbles, and right now on the right, that bubble When we have these echo chambers or these silos where, particularly with social media, where, we're, um, where we think we have a grasp of what everybody's opinions are, but we're really just seeing is one type of opinion or one type of group of opinion. So um, people say that uh, a lot of liberals were really surprised that Donald Trump was elected president. Just in case the unthinkable has happened and Donald Trump is our new president. America is crying tonight. I'm not sure how much of America, but a very, very significant portion. And I mean literally it means that crying. Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. As far as they could see in their social media feeds, everybody didn't like Donald Trump, so why would he have been elected? Well, that's because the people who were talking positively about Donald Trump were in a different silo. And so if we make those generalizations beyond what that actual sample looks like, it's skewing our perspective of, of what's really happening in the world. This is the CBS Television Network. During the golden age of television, there were three major media networks that set the agenda for how we perceive the world. Today, with the rise of new media outlets, we now have the ability to set our own perceptions of society. But is this selective exposure causing a different kind of problem? There is some, some recent research that, that suggests younger generations are turning away from televisual news, um, but of course they're turning t toward social media to get their news. So on, on the one hand, they're, they're, they're turning away toward uh, one kind of news, but they're tur turning toward another type of news that, that it appears is no better. I, I, I'm, not the, I'm not really the type of, of individual who says the world is getting better or getting worse. The world is getting different. As time moves forward, technology is changing rapidly and affects the ways in which we communicate on a global scale. The average person spends more than five years of their life on social media, combined with over seven years watching television, and we spend more than 12 years of our lives consuming media. Because of this, we should make it our due diligence to inform ourselves of opposing viewpoints and create conversation that provokes consideration and not condemnation. What was once meant to inform us is misleading us into a comfortable bias of self-regulated confirmation. But we are the ones that ultimately determine how we allow ourselves to be impacted. Access to information is a tool to be used to leverage our human experience and not to segregate us with only those that think like we do. Don't get stuck in virtual reality. Broaden your horizon, take control, and live in your reality.